Hi folks, I'm Kevin Smith, one of the pastors here at Hope Lutheran Church. I am uh, sharing this recording with you on September 11th, Monday. And this is the day that we remember the World Trade Center, the losses that we experienced there, why this terrorist attack that uh, so devastated our country. It's amazing that that pain is still with many of us, many of us. Oftentimes we have heard comments from different people, media, whatever. They'll say to us, well, America needs to move beyond 9-11. America needs to move past it, or America needs to let go. Uh, we need to get over it. Sometimes you hear those headlines or those words. But I always think of, uh, of this truth that obviously people who write statements like that know nothing about human behavior, know nothing about it. Because grief is not something you get over. Rick Warren reminds us that grief is something you get through. Grief is a tool that God has given us to move through the transitions of life, even those painful transitions of life. We are living in the midst of a broken planet, and you're going to have losses in life. Jesus said so well in Matthew, Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. That's one of the promises of God, that he will comfort us in the midst of our tragic moments. Grief is not what paralyzes when we go through a 9-11 event in our life. When you go through a difficult time, you need a transition period. And that's what grief is. Grief is a transition period that can bring us to a new and healthy place in which to live our lives. One of the profound ministries that we share here at Hope Lutheran is Grief Share. And some of you have taken advantage of that program, of that ministry. It's a very powerful time that when you are at a loss and experiencing the loss of a loved one, it is a wonderful time to come together in a small group and learn from each other and be strengthened by God's word. In the midst of our lives, in the midst of the tragedies that we may experience in all the events that 9-11 triggers in our minds each year. We need to remember, number one, that, that God is still in control. He is still in control. I love Lamentations uh, 3, verse 28. When life is heavy and hard to take, go off by yourself, enter into the silence, bow in prayer, don't ask questions, wait for hope to appear. Wait for hope to appear. And remember always that Christianity doesn't explain suffering, only what to do with it, only what to do with it. Number two, remember that God still loves me, that God still loves me. No matter how painful my situation is, it is not unknown to God. He still accepts me and he still loves me. These words again from Matthew chapter 6, verse 6, Jesus said, find a quiet, secluded place so you won't be tempted to role play before God. Just be there as simply and honestly as you can manage. The focus will shift from you to God and you will sense his grace. Part of that healing process that comes through our grief work, our good grief work, is the realization that God's love is still there for me, no matter how much pain I have been going through in my life. Number three, remember that God is all you need. He's all you need. Again, these words from Lamentations, chapter 5, verse 21. Restore us, O Lord, and bring us back to you again. Give us back the joys we once had. That is a powerful prayer. That is a powerful prayer. Because you will never know God is all you need until God is all you have. And that is a wonderful promise in which God gives to us. Let me conclude with what I'm trying to say in this story. I think back in my years of ministry, I think back to a, an encounter with uh, Dr. Norman Vincent Peale. Some of you might remember that name back from the mid-1950s. He was a famous pastor in America at the Marble Collegiate Church in New York City. On one occasion, he had been invited to a luncheon in honor of one of his members 
who was retiring now as a surgeon. And so Dr. Peel was there to give a prayer for the luncheon. He sat right next to the doctor during the lunch. And so they were uh, visiting and uh, chit-chatting and whatnot. And finally, Dr. Peel asked him, Doctor, is there one surgery in your entire career that stands out above all the others? And the doctor replied immediately. He said, oh, yes. I'll never forget it. She was a frail little girl, five years old. There was only about a 10% chance that she would even survive the surgery. So I went to see her before they gave her the anesthesia, since I always want to see my patients before surgery. I looked at this poor little girl, so small, so thin, so gray-faced, dying. I said, hi, Annie. And she said, what's going to happen to me, doctor? And I explained to her as well as I could how some nurses will give you something that will make you sleep very deeply. Her eyes brightened up and she said very soberly, well, then I guess it's time to pray. And I said, oh, <laughs> yes. Mommy says, always pray before you go to sleep. May I pray now, doctor? He nodded. She held the doctor's hand. And she said, Jesus, tender shepherd, hear me. Watch your little lamb. Watch your little lamb, I pray. Through the darkness, be thou near me. Keep me safe till the break of day. And bless this doctor too, because he's got his own problems. The doctor said she didn't know the troubles I was having in my own home. It just broke me up. I was embarrassed. I turned my back to her and to the nurses and acted and pretended like I was washing my hands again at the sink. At that moment, I prayed, oh God, if ever these 10 fingers can save a life, dear Lord, help me to save this life of this little girl. And in that moment, I felt God's spirit and presence like I'd never experienced him before in my life. The prayer was answered. She survived. The surgery was a success. But the biggest success, Dr. Peel, was that God came into my life in a fresh, real, and authentic way. If faith puts us on the road, hope keeps us there. And that hope, that God will have the last word, and it will be a good word, is what keeps us. God's blessed assurance is not based on your love for God. It is based on God's love for you. That truth is all you need for the living of these days as we prepare to all come and stand before Jesus in that final day of our lives and see him face to face. What a glorious time will be. Amen. Remember, God loves you, and there's not a darn thing you can do about it. God bless. See you next time. Bye-bye.